Cadence of Hyrule is certainly one of the better games that I absolutely cannot play. I'll be perfectly honest and upfront with you, I'm terrible at it, really bad at it. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not having a good time. Uh, consequently, this is one of those games that put pay to this idea that critics uh, such as myself, game reviewers, whatnot, uh, dump on games because they're bad at them. Uh, that is often a, a, a whiny retort uh, put about by people that can't handle that sometimes someone just doesn't like the same games as them. They say, you only don't, you dislike it because you're bad at the game. You suck at video games because you are a casual. And that means you are bad at reviewing and etc. Uh, but... I can't play this one at all, and I'm still really enjoying it. Uh, so, if you've not played the game it's based on, this game is a spin-off of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Uh, as a matter of disclosure, uh, the guy who worked on the music for Crypt of the Necrodancer and this one uh, is Danny Baranowski, who I... Uh, very, fairly fond of. We, we've known each other for a few years. Uh, he has done music for the Jimquisition at, at some point, uh, sort of earlier episodes. He did music. Uh, he did a tune which he called Jim's Dick 2. So that was the name of that. There you go. Little fact for you. Um, so, a matter of disclosure, I do know uh, one person who worked on the game. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Zelda, of course, has one of the most memorable soundtracks ever as a series, The Legend of Zelda. So it makes sense that, that it would show up in rhythm games and tunes from Zelda have shown up in, in music games in the past. Most notably for me, personally, Donkey Konga. Uh, the Hyrule theme being in Donkey Konga was that I used to love Donkey Konga. Did anyone else really like Donkey Konga? Let me know. We could form a little club or something. Huh? The Donkey Konga Club. Would you like that? Would you like? Would you like to be a, a? Would you like to join me as the premier Bongo Boy? That's my name. Anyway, uh, where were we with this? Right. So the map is split up into a grid, and you are to move and attack uh, in tune to the beat. You can see the beat at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's fairly simple and straightforward mechanically. You just use the directional buttons. I would recommend them, the game recommends them over any sort of stick. Uh, use the directional buttons to move around. If you face an enemy and move into it, then you attack it. Uh, very much like an old school roguelike in that regard. Uh, if you miss a beat, then you, you know, miss what you're supposed to do. Uh, and if you keep consecutive beats going, then you can amp up uh, your power as you keep that, as you keep perfect time. And it's really enjoyable. The The music has a, a real um, energetic vibe to it. Uh, classic songs with a, a remixed flavour, as you might expect. Visually, it's just adorable. Um, it's got that, again, that a similar art style to Crypt of the Necrodancer, so it's got those rich, re retro visuals, which really gives this a, a, a Link to the Past vibe. Uh, you travel around, going on a world map, <laughs> Sorry, that, that was just such a toothless sentence. That said nothing. Um, what I really like is, is just how much of a, a Zelda feel it nails. Everything's there. Uh, the various equipment that will grant you access to new areas. You get your bombs. Uh, you get your, your various magical rods and whatnot. Uh, death in this game is not permanent per se, but... You lose all of your rupees and various other items upon death, so there's certainly a penalty. And you can only respawn at uh, map squares that have um, a, a Sheikah stone on it. So often there's a tense rush to get to a new area that has a, a warp point in it that you can, you know, secure as much progress as possible. And it is certainly for me... Uh, certainly someone who gets overwhelmed a lot with a lot of um, uh, audiovisual stuff going on. Uh, just, it's something that's happened as I got an older, as as many of you complained when I talked about uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake and how it just looked a bit too busy for me. Uh, I can find myself definitely overwhelmed by this. Uh, each enemy, each monster has its own movement and attack pattern and you've got to memorise those to be effective. Uh, and sometimes when there's a lot of them on the screen at once, each with their own unique movement and methods of dealing with them, uh, it certainly at times is 
rather brutal, but that is just for me. Uh, some people may have an easy time with it, but it is meant to be quite challenging. Uh, you know, death is an expected part of the experience. You do retain diamonds, which you get for clearing uh, an entire screen of enemies. Uh, they, they, are, they stay with you regardless of how many times you die, and they can be used at the death screen before you walk back into the map to buy um, various things. You start out being able to buy like heart containers, which certainly helps. And then you can buy uh, various consumable items before dropping back into the game, like bombs and, and stuff like that. Bombs and other bombs and more bombs. Just get a lot of bombs, they help you out. You can play as Link or Zelda, which is always nice to see. I always like to see a playable Zelda. She's an absolute beast in Hyrule Warriors. Uh, God, I really want to play Hyrule Warriors again. Anyway, uh, the game's absolutely crammed full of references to past games, lots of different monsters represented, lots of recognisable music, certainly as one would hope for, for a rhythm action game based on Zelda. Uh, little puzzles as well, lots of movie blocks and hidden areas. Some of the hidden dungeons are particularly challenging. You get some enemies that hit ridiculously hard down there and have some uh, quite complicated patterns of attack. Uh, for a game that has such a simple premise, the Necrotancer style uh, opens itself up to a lot of variety, a lot of uh, diverse challenge because the enemies uh, can move in such unique ways and have such uh, uh, different, they have very different attacks. Some of them can uh, take up multiple squares, some of them require blocking and deflecting attacks in order to effectively put them down. But as I say, it could get a little overwhelming for me at times trying to uh, deal with lots of different enemies with lots of different attack patterns that you've got to try and memorize and, and, and work out the strategies for coping with them. It's one of those games where any individual enemy on its own isn't so much a threat, but it only takes the right combination of enemies, the right mix. Of, of, of annoying foes to deal with to turn uh, any particular screen of the game into a real bloody hassle. To be quite honest, I don't know if my patience, my own level of patience is gonna get me to see this game the whole way through, especially because I'm juggling a lot right now. The Mana Collection took up a lot of my time this week and on a lot of people's recommendations, I got that Darkwood downloaded. But I'm certainly glad I've downloaded it. I'm glad I gave it a go. I'm glad I played it. It is adorable. And when you get into the rhythm of it, when you uh, learn, when, when you're able to really hop about the screen in time and start attacking enemies, dealing with them on all fronts. There are moments where even I can get into that zone where I'm just like, this feels fantastic. To the point where clearing a screen at times, which removes the need to move to any sort of beat, feels almost disappointing. We're like, oh, I was really enjoying that. Now, now that this screen is cleared and I can move about at my own free will. Sometimes just out of habit, I'll find myself hopping in tune to the beat anyway. If you're looking for something with some really good music and a lot of challenge, you could do so much worse than Cadence of Hyrule and uh, all of the Zelda accoutrement strapes over it only helps seal the deal. I give this game a Zelda's hair isn't short enough out of 10. 